signs that you'll see from time to time on the gates of people, chain link fences around their house. Uh, you'll sometimes see it when it's really just a fib. Sometimes it's used just to try to keep strangers away from the house. Sometimes it's genuine. When I go door to door uh, and go up to a strange house and they've got one of these signs up, as a general rule, I honor uh, the, the sign. I figure that sign means no preachers allowed. Uh, if you're wondering what I'm talking about, I'm talking about the three words of our text tonight. Once again, Philippians chapter 3, verse 2 is our text, and it begins with these three words, Beware of dogs. Amen. Beware of evil workers. Amen. Beware of the concision. Now, I don't believe that this is a warning against four-legged dogs. Now, I heard a message preached one time called Some Dogs I Have Known by an old evangelist, old Methodist evangelist many years ago. They call it Fighting Bob Shooter. Some Dogs I Have Known. The fellow said, the more I know about some people and some dogs, the more I love dogs. <laughs> there are some dogs, of course, I'll be honest with you, I don't trust at all. Amen. I don't care how friendly they are to you. There are some dogs that by nature, I'm going to stay away from them until I know for sure that we're buddies. Yeah. For instance, I know there's exceptions, but I don't trust Doberman Pinchers. <laughs> I just don't trust them. Amen. Um, I know there's exceptions, and you may have one that's just as sweet as pie. Yeah. But if you've got a Doberman Pinscher, I'm probably not going to bother you too much on, on this station. Yeah. I've learned to find that there's some of these dogs that, that I can become friends with. And, and oftentimes I view it as a challenge when I go to somebody's house to win the affection of the dog. And, and oftentimes I'm successful. But I really regard with some wariness a Rottweiler. Uh, I don't trust Rottweiler. Now, if you've got a Rottweiler that's your baby, that's okay. You know, but I'm just saying that as for me, uh, you're going to have to convince me that that Rottweiler's a baby. Yeah. The same is true with Bulldogs, even though I'm from Georgia. But I don't believe this warning here in Philippians 3 is about four-legged dogs. But the two-legged variety. Especially false teachers Amen. and false preachers. Amen. Some of you have heard me say this because I preached a similar message that I'll mention in a moment here. But I preached on this subject around 1975. You young people don't look at me in shock like that. Yeah. To a group of older people. Did y'all hear Brother Bill talking about older people? To a group of senior citizens in Babinet, Alabama, and I preached, and after I was done, it was a senior citizen center, and a lady running the thing, she'd give people opportunity to say whatever they wanted to say right before we ate, and one lady stood up, she said, I don't care what that young man says, dogs can be really helpful if you live by yourself. <laughs> and she had missed that I wasn't preaching about the four-legged variety. <laughs> Somehow it had set her off wrong at the beginning of the message when I said beware of dogs. And uh, all she could think about was I was against her dog. In reality, all Gentiles are dogs. And you've learned something about this. You ladies need to remember that if God doesn't do something with the man that you like, and think you'd like to marry or doesn't do something with a man you're already married to, his morals and actions can resemble that of a dog. Amen. God makes the comparison on purpose. Amen. We live in a day where people have got everything backwards right. and they treat animals with respect yeah. and honor and don't treat people with respect and honor. That's right. And some people's houses are more animal friendly than they are people friendly. <laughs> and some animals are better protected in the United States of America than babies in the womb are. Yeah. Yeah. And I have no laughter in my heart about that at all. Right. That is sad. Oh. It's wrong. It's sin. <laughs> But you might remember that Greek woman asked the Lord for a blessing when he was 
was here in his earthly ministry, and he, he said to this woman, now, in his earthly ministry, the Lord was dealing primarily with Jews, not Gentiles. And he said to her, let the children first be filled, for it's not meat to take the children's bread and cast it unto the dogs. I'm 65, and one of the reasons why I plan to make it to 66 is I don't call women dogs. I'm more likely to call men dogs and tell you women, you know, not if you're in agreement. There's a lot of men without God's help are dogs. But there's a specific reference in our text to the enemies of the Lord. False preachers, false prophets, false teachers, counterfeit ministers, counterfeit apostles as dogs. The greatest descriptive prophecy in the Old Testament about the crucifixion. Now, I'm not talking about the greatest description of the work of the atonement. That's Isaiah 53. But the greatest prophetic description of the crucifixion itself in the Bible, in the Old Testament, is Psalm 22. You know Psalm 22, how it begins, right? My God, my God. Why hast thou forsaken me? That should alert you to what that psalm's about. And in that psalm, verse 16, says, For dogs have compassed me. The assembly of the wicked have enclosed me. They pierced my hands and my feet. I will bring you a message tonight titled, Beware of Dogs. The greatest enemies of the Lord are lost religious preachers and teachers. Amen. The most scathing chapters in the entire Bible are geared toward these type of people. Jeremiah chapter 23 right. and Matthew chapter 23. If you want to see some hot preaching for preachers or against preachers, particularly lost preachers, Amen. those two chapters uh, will spell it out for you. And by studying 2 Peter chapter 2, you'll find there that a false prophet in that chapter, 2 Peter 2.22, a false prophet in that chapter is called a dog, and a false prophetess is given even a less flattering title, a sow. Again, I plan to live to be 66 if God allow me. So I'm careful about the use of these terms. Amen. I preached another message one time here called Bad Dogs and Hogs from that passage. Taking another one, I haven't preached it here, but taking another likeness that's given in the book of Revelation, I got a message I preached many years ago called Bad Dogs, Hogs, and Frogs, but that's another, that's another time. I want to give you a few thoughts about why God compares these false teachers to dogs and why you need to be aware of them. I know some people, they get alarmed when I name false preachers, false teachers. There's some people you got no business watching on television. Yeah. Not unless you're just doing it for entertainment. Amen. I have to admit, Jesse Duplantis is pretty entertaining sometimes. Back when he was alive, Brother Bill, Reverend Ike was entertaining sometimes. The Georgia prophet in Macon, he was entertaining sometimes. But you need to beware of dogs. Right. It's my job to feed this church the truth of the Word of God. Yeah. As a preacher, it's my job to warn you of false teachers and preachers. Yeah. I ordered a book, received it yesterday, I think it was, called Wolves Among Lambs. Written by an independent Baptist preacher that I've gotten acquainted with, and he just published it, and I'm looking forward to reading it. My job to feed the church of God, which he had purchased with his own blood, Acts 20, 28. Because in the next verse, Paul said, he says, For I know this, that after my departing shall grievous wolves enter in among you. Right. And among your own selves shall be rising men that teach you things they shouldn't right. teach. So I want to give you some thoughts on dogs. And I'll be honest with you, I try to go just as deep in the Word of God as I can. But when I preach, my messages are usually pretty simple. We get done, and you don't know what I preached about, you've been asleep. Yeah. And I've known to have that 
take on people too. Number one, beware. Get ready. I'm from Georgia. Beware of the dog mange. Mange. Beware of the dog mange. And I get a lesson about these false preachers and teachers when God calls them dogs and then allows a skin disease that really affects other animals as well to be one that nobody wants to afflict your dog. And if your dog gets afflicted with this, it's a, it's a sad thing, an aggravating thing, and, yeah. and we really are not proud of it and glad about it. The Bible says concerning dogs in Matthew 7, 6, I want to give you some scriptures, not a bunch, but give you some tonight. You don't have to turn to all of them. If you want to jot down the reference, you can look at it later. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 7, verse 6, Give not that which is holy unto the dogs, neither cast ye your pearls before swine. swine. There they are again. Lest they trample them under, your, under their feet and turn again and rend you. When I say the way of dog mange, mange is just simply a disease that dogs and other animals get. It's usually called by, it's caused by little parasitic mites, little, little animals, little varmints, little insects, little bugs. And the most well-known being the, the mange insect. But it brings about a skin disease that's characterized either at the beginning or after a period of time by skin lesions and itching and eventually loss of hair. Until that happens, it's a hidden problem. The person may not know that their dog has dog mange because it's down there in the skin underneath the fur. And you may listen to a preacher and say, well, he looks like he's got a King James Bible. Wow. He, looks, he looks like my pastor. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> but he's got a suit on. He carries a Bible. He smiles. He looks like a preacher. By the way, if you wear a suit these days and take a bath once a week yeah. and don't cuss when you go pay at the checkout counter, some people think you're a preacher too. That's right. But unsaved preachers oftentimes, according to the Bible, look like God's preachers. Amen. They cover up their mange by putting on the, the outward trappings that people associate with with God's ministers. You can read about it in 2 Corinthians chapter 11. It's in that passage, by the way, where in Paul warning people about these false apostles, false ministers, he says, And no marvel, for Satan himself is also transformed into an angel of light. Many of you are familiar with that passage. These dogs can cover up the mange that they have with their white shirts and expensive suits. I'm not going to go into it on in this message, and some of this is very likely to go across the internet, so I don't want to brag about how cheap I am. Some of y'all know the preacher's always looking for a deal. Amen. But there are a lot of, of men that look like preachers, and they can they can dress up, put on good suits, expensive suits, expensive shoes expensive jewelry and all that, and it, they're hiding what they are. Yeah. It's a horrible problem, though, dog man. And I'm telling you that the unsaved preachers have a horrible problem that's below the surface. And you cannot take for granted that because somebody comes on television and they talk about God, they talk about living right, they talk about the blood of Jesus, or they talk about heaven, you cannot take for granted that they're God's creatures. You just can't do it. That the devil is sly. The devil is deceitful. I believe that you can't trust anybody 100% other than the Lord. Amen. And I understand this, and I, and I don't want you to have unreal um, expectations, but no preacher that God called is perfect either. That's right. That's okay, right. So you can find fault with them. Uh, genuinely, I wouldn't recommend you do it. Right. See Miriam, ask her about that. Yeah. Yeah. But, but these unsaved preachers, they will eventually show their colors, and almost always they do it at some time in their lifetime. Yeah. 
Amen. It's manifest. That's right. Some of y'all remember what happened to Jimmy Swagger. Yes, sir. Amen. Preacher. Some of y'all remember about Jim Baker, the yeah. PTL yes, club. Lord. Yeah. Things have happened in our town. Yes, sir. Really concerned right now about something going on in our town. Yes, sir. In the beginning of a Baptist college, it's supposed to start in our town. That's right. The guy's going to be president of the college is being investigated by the police child molestation, mm -hmm. as well as some other things. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying that that, man, that particular man is unsaved, but I tell you, you need to be aware. Amen. It's a horrible problem. Amen. It may be look like it's, it may be covered up, you may not be able to see it right away. But eventually, a person will leave a trail. That's right. Amen. Eventually, That's right. a person will leave a trail. That's right. Amen. The dog mange will eventually be visible. Eventually, it'll get to the surface. That's a harmful problem. It spreads to others. You get affected by false teachers. We've got at least three churches that have started in, the, in this town in the last couple of years as a result of one false teacher out in Arizona. Three Amen. corrupt churches that I would recommend to anybody if they want to identify themselves with our type of church. I'm talking about a Bible-believing, independent, fundamental Baptist church, which is what we are. Let me tell you, beware. Amen. Number two, beware not only of the dog mange, but beware, number two, of the dog message. There have been times where I enjoy talking to dogs. Sometimes they don't even know I'm around. They'll have a dog next door sometimes, and I'll, and I'll, I'll sit on the back porch read my Bible. And without, uh, without doing it loud, I can watch the dog's ears talk, just perk up and I start going. <laughs> dog looking, <laughs> looking all around. Where in the world is that coming from? The dog on the porch. And that's what happens when the cat learns speaking tongues. <laughs> but the Bible says something about the dog message. It says in Isaiah 56, verse 10, his watchmen, the devil's watchmen, are all are, are blind. They are all ignorant. They are dumb dogs. They cannot bark. Sleeping, lying down, loving to slumber. Boy, that ought to cause every born again, God called preacher to want to stand up at attention and get up early in the morning. Yes. The devil's ministers are ignorant, dumb dogs that cannot bark. You know what? If you get a dog, the Bible doesn't talk about having animals for companions, but if you get a dog, I think one of the best things to get a dog for is to let you know if somebody's on your property don't belong there. Whether you've got him inside or outside, I don't want a dog barking all the time just because of a cat. That's right. But I'd rather have that, if, especially if I was living by myself and I was older, yep. it's very likely I'd have a dog. Yep. And one of the reasons why I would have that dog is to bark. Yes. When somebody comes on my property, they ought not be on my property. Amen. I want him there not for companionship. I want him there to eat up that cop. Amen. If you put a beware dog sign on your yard, I'm going to assume that he eats people. And so I'm going to just assume that uh, you don't want to be saved. You've got to wear a dog sign up on you. The devil's message, the devil's dogs, their message. The Bible says they cannot bark. They may holler, they may look like they're barking, but they have no message. They don't warn of strangers. They're asleep. Some of them have Baptist church written on the names of the buildings where they preach. They never bark. What I mean is they never warn, like I'm trying to warn you tonight. They'll never mention Jehovah's Witnesses by name for the bullet. That's right. They won't mention the Mormons by name from the bullet. They're dumb dogs. They cannot bark. God wants God's man to expose the false teachers that are in this town that might deceive you and your loved ones. Amen. One of the most dangerous things going on in this town is the teaching
teaching and preaching ministry of these dumb dogs. Yes, you don't hear me hammering on it all the time. But folks, Roman Catholicism is satanic. It is satanic. That's right. They don't preach about those things, though. They don't. They won't preach against what I call the charismaniacs. <laughs> they won't tell you that Benny Hinn is just as phony as championship wrestling. Amen. They won't tell you how bad the Southern Baptist Convention has gotten and why no Christian should ever be a Southern Baptist. I think my most viewed video on the Internet is why I'm not a Southern Baptist. It's got something like 30,000 views or something like that. People watch it. They won't tell you that the charismatic groups have gone wrong and, or that the Catholic Church is the great whore of Revelation chapter 17, which I believe. They won't warn of strangers. They don't bark when strangers are around and threatening your family. If you're going to have a dog, I think that's one of the things a dog ought to do. Amen. Amen. Dogs are not for companionship. Animals are for eating or they're to serve man to do something for them. And one thing a dog is good for is to bark when strangers are coming. Amen. Not only will they not warn the strangers, but the devil's preachers won't work. When it comes to study, according to Isaiah 56, verse 10, they're characterized by sleeping, lying down, loving to slumber. Do you know that it's work to study? Right. Book Ecclesiastes says that much study is a weariness of the flesh. When the Bible says, study to show thyself approved unto God, and by the way, that's one of the verses that's changed in that New King James Version. The one verse in your New Testament that tells you to study the Bible using the word study has been changed in the New King James Version. And instead of saying, study to show thyself approved, it says something like, be diligent to be approved. That tell you to study. Preacher ought to study. If anybody studies in a church, preacher ought to study. Ought to be a man of this book. And he ought to do that as an example to the people in the church, get in the Word of God, the ones that will do it the most in God's gifts and blessings can become teachers and work in the church teaching. That's right. I believe that you folks here, all, there will come a time when you're able to teach other people in our church. Yeah. I'd like to see all of you one day get to the point, all of you one day get to the point where you could be teachers yeah. instead of just having to get the basics. They won't work and study. Study to show thyself approved unto God a... Work, man. Work. It takes work to become a student that needeth not to be ashamed. They won't warn about strangers. They won't work in study. And they won't wake the sleepers. I know every now and then some of you get a little bit shocked when I hop. At least it wakes you up. Amen. Amen, preacher. Amen. Yes, sir. Now, I'm not going to worry about it. If some, I know some of y'all are on medication. Because I know what you're like when you're off your medication. Amen, preacher. I know some of you have worked. You know, some of you have problems sleeping at night. I understand all of those things, okay? And so it, it's not, I don't have a tremendous burden if you pass out during the message. The Apostle Paul had that happen to him. But the, but a God-called preacher the Holy Spirit will use him to, if, it, if the Lord ever gets somebody's attention, he wakes them up. Amen. Amen. And it's a real blessing as a preacher that's called to the Lord. That's about all I can say. I don't claim to be anything special except that God called. Amen. And I'm trying to be the best pastor you folks can have. Amen. But one of the joys that I have is every now and then I'll see the Lord get a hold of somebody. And the Lord in tenderness and in conviction and working helps them to see they need to make a change. Yeah. Helps them to see that they're lost. Right. Helps them to see that if they're saved that the prodigal son did not end up in a great place. Yeah. He ended up in the field feeding swine yeah. thinking about eating what the pigs were going to eat mm -hmm. when he could have been enjoying his father's food. Yeah. Beware of the dog mange. Beware of the dog message. Number three, beware of dog morals. Those of you who are men, for sure, remember when you were little boys and you first realized how immoral dogs are. God calls unsaved people and for 
particularly unsaved false preachers and teachers, dogs for a reason. A dog's a filthy beast. Yes. I know some of you got dogs, and you'll appreciate me calling your dog filthy, but I'm just saying that's their nature, that's their moral. Dogs eat things that you humans should leave alone. The Bible says in 2 Peter 2.22, I mentioned the verse earlier, talking about false prophets in the context it says, but it is happened unto them according to the true proverb, the dog, and some of you can finish this, is turned to his own vomit again. And the sow that was washed to her wallowing in the mire. The dog has turned to his own vomit. I've been hungry before. <laughs> but if I see something that looks and smells like that, I'm not going to eat it. A dog's by nature a filthy animal. Remember that when you let the thing kiss you all over the face. And the Some of us know where that tongue's been. <laughs> Beware of the tendency of some religious people, even professing Christians, to let the standards down and encourage you to live a filthy life. And encourage you to live in disobedience to your parents, live in disobedience to your pastor, and especially live in disobedience to what God has said in His Word. Beware. That's a dog trying to influence you. If you're saved, you're a sheep. Sheep ought not to be comfortable getting dirty and muddy and in vomit. Dogs are filthy. They're filthy in private. Concerning the two-legged kind, they think of filthy things. They try to do filthy things. They tempt other people to be filthy. I'll never forget hearing a, a man that I respected talk about another preacher that he knew of. I don't think it was somebody in his church, but he said that the man that he knew of was an evangelist and preached in a church. And somehow during the week, he and this lady in this preacher's church got attracted to one another. Oh, Lord. And he wrote her a note. This is before the days of email oh, texting. He wrote her a note and gave it to her. And he said that it was obvious to him that, that she was feeling the same thing for him he was feeling for her. And he said, it must be of the Lord. Or we wouldn't be feeling it. I'm not saying positively that that was an unsaved preacher. But in my mind, he was a dog. He was a dog. Be there in the, in the name of Jesus Christ to try to, to bring revival. Try to see people saved. And in the midst, he's got his mind on one woman in the church. Dogs are thrilled when they are in dirt. Amen. Come on. Some of y'all know what it's like to try to get one of these animals clean. Really rough. And give him the opportunity. He loved to get right done with that bath and jump in a mud puddle. Or jump in dirt. Get dirt all over him. Boy, that feels good. I was so moist, and now I got covered with this good coat of dust. You know, I did see something I want to share with you today that is talking about a good way to wash a cat, and it has something to do with uh, using your toilet bowl, but I won't get into all that. <laughs> Put soap in and stuff. Yeah, just bless the toilet. Put the Dogs are filthy. They are filthy in private. They are filthy in public. These people, that, these lost creatures, they mingle well with unsaved people. They feel just at home wherever wicked people are. Now, I heard somebody say one time that a, that a preacher ought to be mingling with people enough where you could sometimes smell cigarette smoke on him. And he was talking about that a preacher ought not to be so isolated that he's not ever around unsafe people. But a preacher ought to be a holy man of God. Amen. Amen. That's right. Because he's supposed to be an example for the people of God to be holy men and women of God. That's right. Amen. Your religion, your faith is not determined solely by any means by a preacher. But when the Bible talks about preachers and their qualifications and all of that, as far as I can remember, there
there's not anything said about the qualification of how schooled he must be in the Scripture. Amen. You can read it, 1 Timothy 3 and Titus Amen. 1 particularly. I do believe he needs to. It was to a preacher that Paul said, study to show thyself approved unto God. That's right. In Titus 1, it does talk about holding fast the faithful word he had been taught. They might be able to convince them. I do believe that the man of God is supposed to study those qualifications that many of y'all are familiar with, 1 Timothy 3 and Titus 1, is talking about his holiness of character. That's right. That's right. And one of the most important things about a church is without a pastor is to get a man that loves God. Amen. Amen. Is to get a man that has Christian character. These dogs, on the other hand, they enjoy seeing how worldly they can get. They enjoy seeing how worldly they can look. You see some of them, they're, they're infiltrating so-called independent Baptist churches. Years ago, preachers would have not allowed them to get on their platform and lead in prayer. And now they're pastoring independent Baptist churches. Amen, preacher. Dearly beloved, these things ought not to be. Many churches, and I wouldn't say this is true by any means of good churches, but many churches in main, line, main uh, denominations, they are ordaining sodomites to the ministry. All right. All right. Amen. That's and the ones that aren't ordaining them are fussing about it. Yeah. They're arguing about it. They're holding conferences trying to decide what should we do about these applicants for the ministry who are queers. They won't use that term, but I will. Yeah. What are we going to do about it? I'll tell you what you do about it. Try to get them saved. Amen. Don't put them in the ministry. That's right. And I'm not saying for sure that they're lost. Some people declare that for certain. Mm. But I'm saying they certainly need to get right with God. They Amen. don't need to be up leading a congregation Amen. if they're sodomites. I'm so glad that you folks are here tonight. What a blessing to be able to preach this. There's churches where if I preached 15 minutes of what I preached here, folks all over the church would be passing out. Just for me, preacher. Because dogs That's right. that won't bark. Yeah. Last thing I want to give you is beware of the dog mentality. The dog mentality. I know some of us, you know, enjoy the emotional response that appears to be a dog because dogs are a more friendly animal in responding to you. Of course, they're really friendly if, if you feed them. Yeah. If you pet them, make them feel good, talk nice to them, you know, um, give them food, good yeah. food. Yeah. That's one of the ways I went over dogs. Yeah. When I've gone on visitation door to door, many times I carry two things with me. One is a Frankfurter in a plastic bag, yeah. and the other is mace. <laughs> you never know which one you might need when you're going door to door. But if you feed them, they'd be nice to you, which is in contrast to a lot of cats, unless it's feeding time. Dogs want to be taken care of. What I'm saying is they want to be petted. They want to have all their needs met. They want to feel good. Here's what the Bible says about the devil's preachers in that same passage I read to you. I gave you Isaiah 56, verse 10. I want to give you Isaiah 56, verse 11. Talking about these false prophets, it says, Yea, they are greedy dogs. One of the things the Bible says in 1 Timothy 3 about a man of God is he's to not be a man that is covetous. <laughs> covetous. He's not a man who's covetous and greedy, a filthy lucre, the Bible describes your money. Yea, they are greedy dogs which can never have enough. And they are shepherds that cannot understand. They all look their own way, everyone for his gain from his quarter. In the New Testament, in describing false preachers, false teachers, in Romans 16, 18, the Bible says mark these people. Mark them. No way you can mark them is, is to see them, know who they are. I believe a preacher is responsible for helping you to mark them. Once you mark them, mark them. Mark them all. Put a line through them. No. The Bible says in that passage,
passage, Romans 16, 18, describing these false preachers. For they that are such serve not our Lord Jesus Christ, but their own belly. And by good words and fair speeches deceive the hearts of the sinner. Their mentality is this. Feed me. Take care of me. What's in it for me? Preachers sometimes ask me questions before they go and assume a pastor somewhere. And they want to know about what I would say to a church when they get to discussing money, <coughs> benefits, or whatever. What should I ask for? I say, nothing. I don't know that that'd go over in a Bible college. I say, nothing. Go there and trust God. Love them, serve them, serve God, preach the word, be patient. God will take care of you. Amen. And he'll use some of them. And he'll use that church to take care of them. That's right. And if they don't, God will take care of them. Amen. And if it comes down to it, get you a job and work. Amen. Amen. Paul did that from time to time. But their service is toward themselves. Greedy dogs that can never have enough. Romans 16, 18 says their speech is positive. And the reason is they don't want to run off anybody. Anybody old enough to remember Tiny Tim? Oh, yeah. I think some preachers want to tiptoe through the tithers. Yeah, don't cross somebody who might be the biggest giver in your church. You sure don't want to lose them. Don't make, don't make the church treasurer nervous by saying something that he knows might make you lose them. Their speech is positive, good words and fair speeches. But their stand or position, whatever they take, is pretended. The Bible says in 2 Peter 2, 3, And through covetousness shall they with feigned words make merchandise of you. All you represent to them is a paycheck. All you represent to a false teacher is money in his pocket. I believe the church is supposed to take care of the pastor. I believe that. But a man of God is not after your money. I say a man of God is not after your money. Amen. You ought to take care of your pastor. God allows you to do it. I believe God will bless you for it. Uh, but you be suspicious of somebody that's constantly trying to get your money or get you to take care of them. Beware dogs. Beware of evil workers. Beware of the concession. There are wolves in sheep's clothing. My purpose tonight is just to remind you of that. Because you're going to leave here and you've got a saved pastor that loves you, wants you to grow in the Lord, wants you to be saved if you're lost. And by no means do I claim to be perfect, but I'm a saved pastor. God called me. I believe God called me to this church, and it's my joy to serve the Lord here. But as a pastor, I warn you, don't believe everything that's said to be a preacher. Don't listen to every sermon you can access on the Internet. Don't believe that every church that's between you and this church is a church that's got a real man of God in the pulpit. Yes. There are some. I'm not saying we're the only one. There are some good men. But beware, don't. We stand with you for prayer. We'll have an invitation.